What's up guys? Welcome back to Fisher Hex. This is Travis here. Today I want to discuss the top three equipment failures that can kill your reef if not prevented. Now I have personally experienced all three of these. Uh, it definitely sucks. Um, I do know back in the day when these things happened, if I could only go back in time and know what I know now, I could have prevented them and saved myself hundreds of dollars worth of uh, coral loss, fish loss, um, and just frustration in general. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right guys, number one heater failure. I think this is one of the most common equipment failure types in this hobby. Uh, regardless on how much you spend on your heater, it will fail eventually. Um, I know there'll be people out there who say, hey, I spent uh, $100 on this heater 10 years ago and it still works. Uh, congratulations, I'm glad it still works for you, but uh, I've spent $100 on a heater and it died in six months. I think it's just the way it's produced. It doesn't take much. It can be knocked around a little bit. It will fail eventually, so it's always best to be ready for that. Just in case you guys are not aware of this, heaters fail in two ways. They either fail in the on position or the off position. Uh, if I could personally pick one or the other, I would prefer my heater to fail in the off position. I just feel that tanks do better if the uh, temperature uh, goes down a little bit opposed to uh, going upwards to 90 degrees. I know in my reef tank, uh, I have a total of 600 watts. If both of those heaters were to fail on the on position, uh, it, my tank would get upwards of 90 degrees within an hour to two hours, depending on uh, the ambient temperature in the room. But on the other hand, if uh, the heaters were to die, the temperature would only drop to what it usually is in the house, and I usually keep it around 70 degrees. So uh, my, t my corals have a better chance of surviving if the heaters were to fail on the off position opposed to the heaters failing on the on position. All right, so now what can you do to make sure that this really never becomes a major issue for you? Now, you can never guarantee a heater won't fail. So get that out of your mind. There's no heater out there that's guaranteed to never fail. So uh, we're going to move on to the next thing. Having a aquarium controller such as an Apex or a Reef Keeper, I find that this is the best way to catch any of these problems. So, for example, my reef tank itself has two 300 watt heaters that are both connected to one outlet on the Apex controller. Now the Apex itself has a temperature probe and when you program that outlet it will dictate when that outlet turns on and off based on the temperature. So you can also set alarms. So if the temperature ever got too high, which I have it set to about 80.4 degrees, if the temperature ever got that high it would send me an email, text message, and an audible alarm which would let me know, hey the temperature is too high in the tank and vice versa you can set it so if the temperature gets too low. Now I like to have uh, two heaters because uh, if one was to fail you can always have another one that tends to work and keep the temperature within a safe range. Now in my situation I've had one of the two heaters fail on multiple occasions. Now uh, you won't get an alarm based off one of the heaters failing but you will pick up on fluctuations. So if your tank normally stays within a 0.5 degree fluctuation on a daily basis um, how do I know that one of my heaters is dead is that it will fluctuate uh, to a greater extent, maybe uh, almost a degree or something like that, that kind of tells me, hey, one of the heaters isn't working properly, then I just go in and test and see which one is not heating up anymore. And that's just a quick way to uh, you know, manage that. Now, for those of you who don't have an Apex, I do believe that there is a standalone unit out there that uh, has a high and low temperature that you could set with an audible alarm and just puts a probe into the water. Um, I've seen them before. I don't know the name off the top of my head. I will have to look up and see what they are. Um, I just find it to be much easier solution just to have the apex. And in the end, guys, you got to realize how much money have you already put into your reef tank? Um, if you have something of a 55 gallon, 75 gallon, 100 gallon, you've already invested hundreds and hundreds of dollars into making that system what it is. So spending an extra four or 500 on, a, on an apex controller or, or getting something cheaper like a reef keeper or something like that, uh, that's all uh, money well invested in my eyes, I believe. And I feel like, uh, you know, a little bit of prevention can go a long way to allowing you to have a, a stress-free, successful reefing experience. All right, guys, number two, ATO failure. Now, there are multiple reasons why an auto top-off will fail in a system, and there's also uh, two versions that I like to look at. The people who have uh, calc wasser in their auto top-off to supply calcium alkalinity as the water evaporates, opposed to somebody who just uses it to take care of evaporated water alone. So before we dive into what causes an ATO to fail, let's look at those two situations and what the difference is and how it would affect your reef tank if it was to fail. All right, so uh, for somebody who uses calc washer to supply calcium and alkalinity to your reef tank, uh, and also depending on how potent their uh, calc washer solution is, will dictate how bad the situation will get. For example, in my reef tank, I had the max amount of calc washer in my auto top off back in the day. 
and the auto top off failed on the on position. It dumped six gallons of calc water into my sump. Not only did it overflow my sump, but it wiped out my entire tank. The calc wash solution was, it sent the alkalinity through the roof and it just killed off everything. Thank God I didn't really have much coral just starting off, but just keep that in mind. If you have calc water, you need to take extra measures to make sure that it does not all go into your sump. Okay, now let's look at the other situation. With somebody who just has it to top off water, your biggest problem you're gonna have is diluting the tank uh, too much. And that is not really such a big deal if you have a big tank upwards of 100 to 200 gallons. If you dump 10 gallons of fresh water into your sump uh, and your sump can hold that water, your tank should be fine. There really shouldn't be any fluctuation in salinity that's gonna be really gonna impact your coral. But if you have a uh, 15 gallon system or a 20 gallon or a 30 gallon tank with a 20 gallon sump, something like that, and you drop 10 gallons of water into your uh, sump, you're going to uh, really throw off the salinity and can really impact coral species such as uh, SPS and LPS. A lot of soft coral species really won't be impacted by that, at least not to a greater extent. All right, now that we covered all that, let's move into what causes an ATO pump to fail. Now, uh, just like a heater, an ATO pump can fail in the on position or the off position. So let's look into the off position real quick because that's the easiest one to go over. Now, uh, the worst thing that can happen when an ATO pump fails altogether, stops working, uh, your main pump can actually dry up because there's not enough water in there if you don't catch it in time, and also your salinity will rise due to the fact that you're not topping off fresh water to keep that stable salinity. So that's one of the worst things that can happen, uh, particularly the main pump failing. Uh, that's one of the bigger issues of the two. All right, now let's look into the other aspect of it uh, when the pump stays on. Now, what causes that? In my situation, it's usually the sensor, the main water sensor. Something happens to that sensor. Uh, either it's uh, jammed with like a snail or it gets clogged up with detritus. Something like that can cause the flow switch not to go back up causing uh, the pump to turn off. Now that's pretty common. That's why I always recommend that when you do uh, like every three months, depending on your system, it's always good to go ahead and clean those flow switches and make sure that they are uh, working properly to prevent that from happening. Also having a backup flow switch hooked up to an apex breakout box. That is another way that I like to make sure that the uh, water level doesn't go too high. Um, in that situation for me, I have the main float switch that actually controls the uh, auto top off, but then I have two more within the sump. So uh, if the water level gets too high, it will turn off the auto top off altogether, uh, the power itself, so it won't work. And it will also send me an alarm, again, via text, audible alarm and email, just to let me know where the water level is. All right, for those of you who don't have the Apex, there is an alternative that you could use. Um, it's the Tunzi Oscillator. It's a, I think it's a couple hundred dollars for this auto top off, but basically it uses an electrical eye to uh, sense the water level, and then it has a, a mechanical flow switch above it, which will turn off the pump if the water was to ever get too high, if that eye was to ever fail. Now I use the cheaper version of this, and again, I let the Apex control, but that's personal preference. Uh, I will say if you don't have the Apex and uh, you have the extra cash, I would go ahead and spend the money on the higher end auto top off uh, with that backup switch to make sure that the pump turns off. All right, guys, moving on to the last piece of equipment that could fail and kill your reef tank. It is the main pump. Now, in the situations that I've uh, encountered regarding uh, my main pump failing, it has happened because the pump seized up for whatever reason. Now, uh, in my situation, uh, the bio pellet reactor that I was using before, the uh, residue that came off those bio pellets was actually coating the inside of the magnet within the pump. And when I had a power outage, the pump never turned back on. That happened to me twice. I've since removed those bio pellets and moved on to other ones, so that's not ever going to be an issue for me. Another reason why my pump has failed in the past is I didn't always have a protective screen over the input of my return pump. Now, what happens is it pretty much sets it up for anything to float inside there. And I have a lot of snails within my refugium, and they like to travel in between the chambers. Now, unfortunately, a, a small turbo snail lodged himself on the input of my return pump and destroyed the propeller and killed the pump. So keep that in mind. If you can uh, get a sponge over the input or the screen that comes with it, like on a JBO pump, uh, that's the best thing to do. It really does protect the inside of your pump. Another common reason why a return pump will fail is because it ends up running dry due to not having enough water in the return section. Now this could be because the auto top off actually failed to put water back into the tank and you didn't realize that it got too low. Now remember I mentioned that I had a third flow switch. Now what 
I like to do is put this flow switch about the same height as the inlet of the return pump. Now what happens if the water level ever gets that low, my apex will send me an alarm and uh, it will notify me that the water level is too low in the sump. Now you could even go as far as having it turn off the uh, return pump if it ever got that low. I've just chose not to go that route. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it to be helpful. Um, I was hoping that I could give you guys enough information uh, in this short video to uh, guide you guys in the right direction, hopefully preventing these three common equipment failures from happening, or at least if they're going to happen, have you guys set up for success to uh, do something about it quickly without losing your coral or your fish. So. I hope it uh, was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, let me know. You can either uh, hit me up on uh, Fish of X Facebook page, or you can hit me up on the uh, Building a Successful Reef group that we are pretty much a little community there that we have of subscribers. Either way, guys, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.